Hey guys, what's going on? I'm doing a little quick analysis on uh, the Gala Weekly, no, week number 6 tournament because they pulled some really cool teams and I kind of want to learn uh, uh, learn what to bring and what not to bring and what to include in my next uh, kind of teams. So, and I found it this week to be really super interesting, right? So, as you can see, like, the first two Pokemon that catches your eyes, right, this week is definitely Vanillux and also Cinderace which is pretty insane like you you don't see much vanillux down um down at top 25 but you see it at top 10 or top 6 really you see a lot well yeah top 10 and that's really interesting and i think why let's let's talk about uh, vanillux first i think vanillux is used because it's just prank it's just prankster grimmsnarl on on roids basically because it basically sets up both screens with Aurora Veil and also has a chance to mess up the weather for your opponent if they're running a sand team or a uh, rain team. And having one turn to set up both screens in one turn is better than setting up first the first one screen. Even though you could argue that one screen you only need one screen because uh, you're either against physical or special attacks, so you only need a light screen or reflect for whatever attack that you're uh, going against. However, in most scenarios, people tend to spread their damage quite evenly. There's usually three special attackers and three physical attackers. Um, for example, team number four, you have uh, these three as the Cinderace, the Tyranitar, and Exegil as physical attackers. Titar could be a special Titar as well, and then you have these three, Hatterene, Sableye, <laughs> and Ludicolo as uh, special attackers, which is, uh, so it's pretty even, right? Everything's pretty even, like even this Trick Room team, you have um, Vicavolt, Charizard, and you can even argue that uh, Whimsicott is a special attacker. You can't really argue that Dusclop does any damage whatsoever, so maybe this one's less even, but there's three special attackers and two physical attackers. So having it set up both at the same time, the Aurora Veil that sets up both is really beneficial and it's really good to um, w w to mess up the weather as well on the first turn, which can uh, give you better damage calculations on your side of the field. They might not be able to Oko one point. Uh, one Pokemon, whereas Grimmsnarl has to um, use a turn for one shield, another turn for another shield, and maybe a third turn, if it even survives, to T-Wave for that control, which is pretty awesome. Right? Like, as you can see, like, people heard about this Vanillux, because people are bringing the Cinderace, whereas um, people nearer to the bottom are there is there is one person that bring Vanillux, but they bought it in like a in a swim like a in a rain team kind of or a sand team way where they bring a sl slush rusher which is bar baritic or uh, with the Vanillux snow warning. I'm pretty sure. I'm not entirely sure. This is my guess, and I'm just trying to uh, break break it down for myself and you guys. If you know any more, please tell me in the comment section below. But as you, I, I think this is like a waste uh, of the Vanillux because uh, I mean no, it's not a waste of van Vanillux, but it's a waste of the Beretic. This could have been like, a, for example, a Cinderace here and uh, stolen Trick Rooms. I mean not Trick Rooms, Tailwinds and Screens with Court Change, for example. Because uh, Vanillux can actually just be a solo. Pokemon that just goes in and just messes everyone up. And moving on to the next um, Pokemon, which is Cinderace, which caught my attention. Uh, Cinderace has um, the move set on the top team. It didn't have Court Change. However, I'm pretty sure most of these other teams are running Court Change on the Cinderace because Court Change is really unique skill where it allows you to steal their screens and tailwind 
So basically, you don't really have to care if they're running whimsical or whatever. Just just steal it. Just just straight up steal it. And especially when they're running whimsical, because the the whimsical always gets off the tailwind. And then, however however fast your however fast your Pokemon are, it, he will always get it first uh, with Prankster. And then second, and then the, and then the second. Pokemon, which will be Cinderace, usually, will steal the the Tailwind or Light Screen, especially with how much um, Vanillux is in here. It's also really good to steal Aurora Veil as well, which I've, I'm pretty sure some some people heard about the the secret Disco Tech, the secret Vanillux source that people are using, and people just tacked in this guy. But the top team wasn't running. Um, running court change. It was actually running just a normal fire attacker build with pyroball, uh, protects, high jump, uh, high jump kick and sucker punch I think using um, some kind of item that increases accuracy for high jump kick which is interesting. I, I, I don't really understand why you wouldn't run court change. I guess running protect is pretty important. And the rest of this team is uh, pretty st not standard, but pretty flavor of the month. That's how I'd say it. There's like whimsical for tailwind support, and also trick room. I'm not sh I'm not sure if it was running trick room. I think it was running safeguard just in case for the paralysis of butterfree roaming around. I mean, not para not paralysis, but uh, sleep from butterfree, and also paralysis from Pikachu and Jellison as it's a really tanky uh, Trick Room setter. Duraludon to deal with the Trick Room and Conda Core so you have something to do in Trick Room which I find really awesome in this team. Second team is... Uh, I think it's kind of standard with the with, with how everything's lining up with the Togekiss uh, Dragapult which is really strong. Just Dragon Dance with the Follow Me allows you to set up Dragon Dances and make Dragapult a absolute threat with a uh, so they have Fairy, Dragon and Steel Core so with the extra drill so they put a Sand Team, Sand Core in there and also a Gastrodon because they're not running any water type so if you're not running water type or like a Rain Core in your team you definitely put um, a Gastrodon in and a, Demon a G Demonitan to break through walls I'm guessing and then we get to this third team. This third team probably is like super interesting. <laughs> like this probably caught your eye more than the Vanillux and the Cinderace here in these positions. Like it's it's kind of crazy. It's I think it's definitely a Parasong team because they're using the new uh, trappers that you can use to trap. Because there's not many good Pokemon with Shadow Tag apart from Goffler Teller, but he doesn't run Goffler Teller, so. People might not even pay attention, might not know. So this team probably caught a lot of people by surprise. I would be caught by surprise by this, especially with a Pichurin as well. So basically, uh, Lapras has Parasong, and then you trap the, the enemy Pokemon with either Sandaconda or Sandascorch, depending on what uh, Pokemon they're using. So for example, you might want to bring uh, Sandascorch if they have a, uh, have like a lot. Of not, uh, I don't know, grass? Uh, if not, not grass, like, yeah, well, grass, yeah. But the sand, if they're running sand team, you run, you run, uh, actually, no, they're both pretty good for sand teams. I'm, I'm not sure. Let me, let me, let me quickly check what Center Scorch is, uh, is good for. So, when they're basically not running a flying type, a rock type, or a water type, you, you you bring that, and then for Sandaconda, what? Water, grass, and ice. Okay, that's cool. So they kind of cover each other. You bring one in, 
their G-Max move traps them in. This Paturin, I've heard that it's just good because of Electric Surge, which sets up um, Electric Terrain. Super interesting. Um, but it's really slow. It's only it's only weak against ground types, and the electric terrain allows it to not get slept, which people are, are tr trying really hard to not get slept at the moment because of G Max Butterfree. And it's also really slow, so it works against um, enemy trick room. As you can see, there's not much things you can uh, that, that that goes against trick room here, apart from this guy and maybe Scrafty with Intimidate, where he. They, they just keep on switching in the Scrafty. This Aromatis, I am not sure what it does. It does a lot of healing, so I'm guessing it heals and it probably just supports the the trappers to make sure they die. Uh, because this is a full Parasong team, the, the hardest part, the hardest part of the full Parasong team is, the, is to get the first two knockoffs. If you get the first two knockoffs, the next two knockoffs usually follow by <laughs> quite easily because you just have to stall for the last two. The first two, you have to actually try. That, that, that's what I think this team is. I, I, I can't really see anything else to it, but, but it being pretty cool. And it works because it got to top three. Pretty impressed with this, like uh, pretty interested in this. I, I might even give this a try if I if I find a brand support for it. Um, another, the next team is a pretty interesting team as well because it's basically running three cores here, right? It's running a rain core with Sableye and, and uh, Ludicolo, and I know I'm just guessing, but I'm entire I'm 100% sure that this Sableye is running Rain Dance because Whimsical can't rain, run Rain Dance. And it's really good because people are realizing that Pelipper is actually quite a really Pokemon because how, how its speed kind of goes against um, Tyranitar, um, Torcoil, and even Vanillox right now because if they if they just play it out normally with zero speed inv uh, with zero speed investment, uh, you you get out sped, so <laughs> the Torkoal will definitely set the sun, and the Tyranitar will definitely set the sand. So you have to do like you have to read if they're gonna do that, and you have to swap in. So uh, you have to swap in the Pelipper during the turn, which is kind of a waste of a turn, right? And it's quite easy, and it's quite frail actually. Like it will most likely die to four X lightning in this meta. However, if you use it on a prankster support, right? Uh, if you use rain dance on a prankster support, it's really good because none of that can happen if they if they are trying to play around you uh, you swapping in. They will swap in right as well. So if they swap in, their their weather effect activates, and then prankster rain dance will activate. So you always get the rain off regardless of the situation unless they go in between your prankster and your swift swimmer and they u-turn that that's the only time when it will um, affect it if they if their speed is goes right in between but that's really hard especially when swift, when it rains up you I don't think anything can go in between because you get just so much speed. And then the next core is the Sand Team core, which is pretty, pretty obvious. Just Tyranitar and Excadrill, probably running Weakness Policy set, but it's also running this Trick Room kind of setup with Hatterene, which I'm kind of confused about. All this Trick Room could also be um, for Tailwind, so they just reverse the Tailwind. If the enemy team Tailwind wins, they're so much faster than you. If you Trick Room, you're definitely gonna go first against them because this guy's not running anything but then Cinderace is also here potentially potentially for the court change um, steel so I'm not sure I'm not sure what, what's that item that uh, all the Cinderaces are actually using right now I got it on here somewhere
Wide Lens, Wide Lens, that's what it's called, Wide Lens. So this team is really awesome. People are starting to know that just pressing the rain dance button is kind of good. Like you can see that it's really good um, on the fifth team actually, where Whimsical is also a prankster support and it has Sunny Day instead of Rain Dance. So Whimsical Charizard is is like pretty good with solar power. It just kills everything on site. And so and is using Rain Dance as a move, so it's wasting a move turn for you know basically helping hands. Equivalent to Helping Hands, the move Helping Hands, and it gets the stun up for your partner Pokemon. So why is it not good for Rain? It's basically the same, I'm, I'm pretty sure. And you also get a, a, a water move buff, so that's pretty cool. I, I quite like that. I might actually start using that, because I, I, I have, I'm starting to use, a, I'm starting to like the Rain team core more than the Sand team, so I'm quite interested in um, using the Celeb. Sableye to get rain off. Guaranteed. Um, the fifth team is pretty standard. It's got like some Trick Room with Vicar Vault and Rhyperion. So you choose, pretty sure straw, you just choose whichever one's good for the match. And you either lead with Whimsical or Charizard or Whimsical with Gastrodon. Because they get quick pickoffs and you can snowball from there. Or you lead with a Dust Clops. Plus Tyranitar or Vicar Vault. I'm thinking if there's a, any scenario where you will. What, what would you lead off at the back afterwards? Like if you lead Whimsical Charizard, what would you lead afterwards? Like Jackovish? Rhyperion? Or Vicar Vault? Not sure. I need to see the stats for this, but that's what I'm guessing. And also kudos to VG at VGC Stats for this nice uh, image. I, I don't want to steal anything, I just <laughs> want to use it to analyze and help me get better at the game as I'm learning whilst I'm doing these videos. And hopefully you guys take some, uh, take some of my knowledge and also give me back some uh, knowledge about Pokemon 2. The sixth team is kind of standard, right? There's there's not much to it. It's just dust clops with Butterfree support. Maybe you just win off Butterfree sleeping the whole team, and you get a free swap into Rhyperion off the Trick Room. Oh wait, actually, there's Indeedee as well for Follow Me support as well. I don't know. This team's actually quite interesting. I think the carries are Gastrodon and Rhyperion, like the sweepers. Arcanine for Intimidate support. Maybe, maybe Butterfree is a sweeper too. With Quiver Dance? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, this team seven is really is really cool because they changed the the sand core with Tita and Extra with a Hippowdon, and Hippowdon's pretty. I've been thinking about Hippowdon a lot because it has access to Yawn, so it's a little bit better than a support uh, as a support to Extra Drill than you know a secondary damage dealer like Tyranitar, even though Tyranitar's got six hundred total stats, which is amazing. But Hippowdon gives it gives it a little bit more support. A bit of damage to make, ensure that Oko's on some. Uh, if you double in on one Pokemon, you sometimes get the Oko. But this, the we, and we see the Vanillux again. It's uh, yeah. I guess it's really. I think this is purely for the screen. And perhaps you swap into the Hapaldon, or maybe it's got an eject button. Who knows. <laughs> Who knows what what they use? I think um, in most scenarios they start with have held on extra, or maybe extra plus something. I don't know what this torrent, uh, not this torrent, but his special, his his ability is torrent. 
But I'm not sure what this Inteleon is for though. I guess it's just for water coverage because he doesn't have much water coverage. But people tend to run Gastrodon for their water coverage in teams like this. Like, for example, team number two, they have Sandcore with this. Yeah. Hmm. And they they're running also whimsical and Togekiss support instead of a dragon pole. I'm I'm not sure why this is a whimsical instead of a dragon pole though. Is there anything that he needs to protect? Well, he can protect his extra drill and is also his Inteleon with that, I guess. Not, not entirely sure. Not entirely sure. But cool team. But you so using a different sand core with the Hapaldon and using Vanillax for the Aurora. I probably have to try this team out. This team looks. I definitely have to try it. This team is quite um, interesting. I can't really work it out right right now. Just just looking at it. This team looks like a standard kind of team. It has Togekiss plus Corviknight um, combo lead, which is pretty strong. And for coverage, they have a Corviknight at the back instead of the extra drill. What I've seen so far with this setup is it's either Bronzon as the coverage with Trick Room core, but this one doesn't have Trick Room, so it's kind of a tanky. Um, standard kind of lineup with a gastrodon to for the water coverage what good water switch in and also rotom for a good grass type pokemon because there's not really many good grass type pokemon at the moment if you're not running uh, rain with ludicolo this corviknight is also really tanky and this Arcanine is just intimidate. Okay, yeah, I think that's number eight team. And then here's where we get like a little bit into more of like the really standard teams, right? Well, not really standard teams, but like more. Uh, you can kind of see like some kind of com similarities. There's a hell of a lot of Dragon Balls, right? A hell of a lot of Whimsicals. A hell of a lot of Tyranitars. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of Gashadons. Whereas th th you, you see a few similar faces like Extra Drill, Rapirion, Titar. Actually, not even Titar too much. Gastro, some good Pokemons, and a few Dragapults. But then you also see the the everything, <laughs> everything else. So watch uh, number nine's team from L Lugia VGC. You have uh, a Sun Core, pretty strong. Uh, Intimidate for water coverage with Gar Gyarados, I think. I'm not too sure what this Indeed is for. Because he's not trying to set up anything, right? Or maybe he's trying to set up the Trick Room. And Durant. Durant's a pretty good Steel type that is been coming on and off recently because it does a lot of damage and it has a lot of coverage and there's also abilities is to lower its accuracy for um, for more damage yeah I'm not sure how this Ndidi lines up though there's definitely some kind of trick room it's definitely like some kind of Tailwind, Sunny Days, Moonblast, Trick Room, Whimsical and I guess it, against teams that don't have much against um, have much against Trick Room, they just lead Whimsical and Didi. Uh, I don't know when you would ever bring this there. The Durant. I guess it's a good. Is it slow? I think it's slow. Is the Durant slow? Hmm. 
No, it's really fast. No, I have no clue then. No idea. What about, yeah, cool, cool, cool team. Next team is getting, it's kind of the same, Sun Core, Rhyperion, for Trick Room. I'm guessing this doesn't have zero speed IVs because it's not hard Trick Room. Uh, Trick Room Setter, Intimidator, oh, Gar Gyarados is also Trick Room, uh, in uh, Intimidator too. Duraludon to potentially kill any Trick Room, like the hybrid Trick Room teams. Yeah, this one is the Togekiss Dragapult core, Steel, and Steel Dragon and Fairy type core with the Excadrill. So it brings along with it a Tyranitar. Um, Chandelure's been pretty decent actually, um, allowing it, allowing for imprisons on Trick Room so they don't get set and. Lapras also plays the same kind of role as Gastrodon, I think, with Water Resorb. But it's not as good because it has to hit into the Lapras spot. And it could be running Parasong. It could be. Like, people are starting to run Parasongs because he has really quick uh, leads with Togekiss, Dragapult, and Extra Drill Tyranitar. But, so they, you, usually if you lead with those two, you can get um, two pickoffs. And then two pickoffs and into a switch into a Lapras Parasong means in three turns you can just stall out and win from that. That's what I think. Also, it could just purely be a ice, a water ice coverage for um, and a good switch in for against water types in if if he brings the sand core. Yeah, uh, kind of the same team here. Yeah? as number 8 but he uses he doesn't it's a T-Tar instead of a ga, uh, Rotom Mo what benefit I don't think this has like a Nombo man like it has counter synergy I'm pretty sure unless you bring it with Gashadon but this has a Nombo so <laughs> I mean, I can see why you bring Togekiss Dragapult with this Corviknight and a, and these two, but this Tyranitar is kind of question mark. I guess it's so something runs weakness policy, but weakness policy is pretty strong. But I don't really understand what why uh, it wasn't some grass coverage actually compared to um, number eight's team like this. It's pretty much the same, right? Apart from this Brodom in and this Tyranitar. They've been changed. Like, uh, this Rotom is really good against Gastro. And also, and also um, the Lapras. I guess it just does a lot of damage with weakness policy procs. Hmm, interesting. Like he could have went full with this, like like for example, Sarai Surya's team with Lapras. It's kind of interesting. Not too sure. And then number thirteen, Viper's team with Dragapult, Grim. Now. So this is the light, this is the screen guy that everyone's bringing before Vanillax, I'm pretty sure. But there's only one person that got to top that's got to top to top 15 with the Grimstyle setter. Yeah, I'm guessing this is a mold breaker, it doesn't bring Tyranitar. And Parsimum, which is uh A good fighting fighting dark type coverage. I don't know what this. I'm not entirely sure. I like teams that, that I don't really really know about is standard teams. 
and how they play out. I guess you just kind of drag and dance and hope to win from really good coverage uh, on the board, like good switch ins and good damage, uh, good super effective damage. That's that's why I think that, like this is a really standard team. Like I don't really understand standard teams because I I like some crazy teams like Trick Room or um, Rain and Sand. Sometimes I don't really like Sand, but I might try out this Sand. This Sand looks really cool. Yeah. So and and also Intimidators, Mole Breakers, just like really good stuff Pokemon. Will-O-Wisps with the Rotom Oven, Rotom Heat, just some standard stuff. This is a little bit different, so this is maybe a beat-up combo with Lucario, Whimsical, and maybe Arcanine, maybe, probably not Arcanine, probably just Lucario. You, I don't think you bring a beat up, two beat-up Pokemons to beat up, right? Maybe you do, maybe you do for different coverage but I'm sure it's Lucario because Arcanine is not being in favor this month. I've seen more Lucario beat-ups than Arcanine beat-ups. With Reniculus for the Trick Room setup with with um, Rhyperion and a Dragapult because why not just put a Dragapult and everything. Because, well, Dragon Ball is actually a really good Pokemon and it's got really good coverage and it's got really sick stats, so you can just be put in every single team. And Dragon type is really good aggressive um, typing. It has uh, Steel from Lucario, it's got Dragon from here, and Fairy from Whimsical. So it's got some really good cores here. Oh, I do, oh, I guess I would try this team out because it's. Um, yeah, it's, it's got. Got some cool monsters like Renekulus. It's like uh, Re Renekulus is a really tanky Trick Room setter. I don't know if it's tankier than Dusclops, but it's got um, a better ability than Dusclops, so it can't get um, paralyzed. Well, no, it's not paralyzed. It's flinched. Magical Guard. What does Magical Guard do? Renuclus. Oh. It also has Regenerator, Magic Guard. So it doesn't get poison, it doesn't get paralyzed. What does Overcoat do? I th I think people run Magical Guard on it or Regenerator or switch in Baton Pass kind of shenanigans. Uh, no, nah, I don't think people. Would, I don't think they go against weather that much. I think they rather just take the damage from weather. Yeah, cool team. And then number fifteen by Billy. He's running the Dreadnought. So I've been experimenting with Dreadnought G Max, and it's actually better than people expect. Because people think Stealth Rocks isn't very good, which it isn't, right? Stealth Rock is hella shit. Oh, oops, sorry, language, but it's really bad. Like uh, Stealth Rocks on its own is really bad, but this the G Max move isn't just Stealth Rocks, right? It's potentially a Oko. And then Stealth Rocks, so they immediately switch in. They they, they have to switch in because you just killed a po Pokemon. Right? You you just have to. They 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 are forced to switch in. So that's basically ten percent damage, right? And that's for two Pokemon. So that's about uh, twenty percent damage, extra damage that you wouldn't have got. And if they're playing a switching game, it's even more. So it's guaranteed that. Well, it's also depending on the how effective it is against their Pokemon, but. That 10% or 5% or whatever percentage the Stealth Rock did can actually help your Oko a lot of things. Like, it can actually help you kill a lot of Pokemon unexpectedly. 
if you OK the first one, that is. And also it has Head Smash, which kills everything. Like, it really just kills everything. It's 150 base with with Stab, which makes it like 180, which is crazy. He's running the Pelipper, but Pelipper's weak. I, I, I'm pretty sure you, you should run Sableye. But at the same time, you miss. Like, if they don't do anything tricky, the Pelipper is way better because you can uh, scold with Rain Boost and Stab, which is really strong. So I'm guessing this guy runs either Pelipper, this guy, Dreadnought, or Ludicolo, depending on the situation. And if he's against uh, Mimikyu, he brings out the Mole Breaker X with uh, This for Trick Room. These two for Trick Room and DD Chandelier. But why? It's He doesn't really have any slow Pokemon. I'm pretty sure they're not slow. Or maybe they he hasn't put any investment in uh, in the rain, swift rain patterns, right? And just gets the just enough speed or to outspeed common threats, maybe. So he doesn't fully invest into speed. No, that, 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 that's pretty interesting. Maybe he just does it to just change trick room. I like this team, but I feel it doesn't look very good <laughs> on paper because there's too many like small things, man. Apart from this turtle, this turtle was quite big. You gotta have a nice like composition on your team, right? <laughs> um, where am I? Number sixteen, mechanics, Pokemon. So this is another good standard team, right? It's got already Intimidate, uh, Gastro for Water Coverage, Dragon Coverage with Dragapult, and then they people just put random Tyranitars. Why? Why do people put random Tyranitars? I'm so confused about this random Tyranitar. What? What is this Tyranitar? Random Tyranitar. I know it does hella damage with weakness policy, and everyone can proc it because it's weak to almost everything. But why? However, this one doesn't replace it for Rotom Grass because Rotom Mole is is in this as well with a Corviknight. So it's like a kind of tanky, maybe a lot of damage, kind of a bruiser lineup, I'd say. I think that's a good way to think about this lineup. It's kind of a bruiser lineup. Yeah. Number 17's team's got a Ranunculus, Togekiss, Rhyperion, Scrofty, and a Sand, I mean a Rain Core. So this is basically the second place uh, Shomo's team, Rain Core, and then Trick Room Core. However, with that, with uh, Intimidator instead of a Dragapult. And also, yes, yeah. Well, I've been kind of using that team. It's, I think it's good for a lot of things actually. It's, it's really good for against a lot of teams. But I do, ha I do have to worry about um, when they just set some screens down. They get set all the screens up with the Vanillax Aurora Veil. Or just two turns of Grimmsnarl, you're pretty screwed. And also, if they steal your till Tailwind, it's pretty sad. I guess ah, oh, this is why Renuculus is being run because screen. He also learns how to use both screens, so could be using both screens with it, but it's really slow. So unless it's got. I think it, I think screens have priority though, so maybe it gets it off. But yeah, it's actually pretty good because you actually do no damage. You put the screens up and then you you swap in the intimidators, and then if you have a free game of Trick Room, you just play the Rapier Room. Yeah, cool, cool team. Interesting. I, I might check out Renuclus. It might be pretty good. 
I haven't, I haven't tried out um, Scrafty yet, but maybe it's Scrafty to check out too. Uh, number 18. Oh, this is another kind of standard team with Trick Room Core, Togekiss plus Dragon Core, uh, or Gyarados, because you can just set up some Dragon Dancers. So it's pretty similar. Uh, number 19. Tailwind from Whimsical, Gastro for Killing Weather. Yeah, get it. Yeah, it's about it's about the same. Yeah, I've, I've covered kind of kind of covered what it does. Wait a second. No, wait, no, 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 no. I haven't covered it. It's a beat up Arcanine. These ones are definitely a beat beat up Arcanine. I must. Uh, if I miss this in a game. I, would have, I might have lost, <laughs> but it is a beat up Arcanine, and it's you can tell after thinking about it because Grafty is usually intimidated. So without the without the Scrafty, you might not see that the Wims it might be a beat up team, and you don't play accordingly against it. So yeah. So it's a beat up with two. Uh, yeah, it's just a beat up team, fast, aggressive, with a, with wheezing as a counterplay to weather. It has not much. It, it doesn't have anything against screens though. Like a lot of these teams doesn't really have anything to do with screens, so they just have to power through them. Yeah. Alright, this one's a cool team though, but didn't do too well. So this is definitely a G-Max um, G Max dude, G-Max Snorlax. With Mimikyu as a hybrid setter. So it has it has the chance to do that, and then it also has this Sun Core with Chloroform Vileplume. I've actually, I don't know how, but Vileplume has actually outsped a prankster thingy and and uh, destroyed me. Prankster whimsical and destroyed me. Uh, basically, if you don't get the trick room off, or you, or you don't necessarily need to get the trick room off, you just do after you support into Torkoal, and you get the eruption off, and it usually kills one or two or both. Pokemon, and then it has some good stuff with Dragapult, and a good switch in with Scraggy, Scrafty. Yeah, I do want to try out this off the YouTube. I'm not sure how strong it is. So this guy, <laughs> number twenty-one, got the word about Vanillalux being OP, 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 but he kind of used it with a Slush Rusher. Which getting top twenty, uh, getting top twenty five is pretty good, right? I don't know how many people are, are in this one. Two hundred sixty two, right? Top twenty five is pretty sick, right? Uh, so Vanillax must be good, but I feel like it's wasted a spot on the Veratex because the Ice Pokemon with Slush, like Slush Rush, which is the equivalent to Swift Rain or Sand Rush, um, just isn't that good. So you're kind of wasting a Pokemon on that. You rather just bring Vanillax as a solo, solo carry, right? And let it set up screen and p potentially die or do damage with Blizzard. Because the other thing that Vanillax have, other compared to Grimmsnarl, is that it can do AOE cleave damage and big damage with Blizzard. It's crazy damage, absolutely insane. Whereas you when you kind of set up all your screens with Grimmsnarl and you know T wave everything that's important. You have either foul play, spirit break, or play rough, something along the lines. Usually foul play at the moment, and it just doesn't do that much damage. It maybe does twenty five percent damage at most. Um, however, this guy can straight up Oko with Blizzard, both of them, 
And if you're also running another secondary like um, wave clear or, or clip or, or cleave, you can probably oko um, the enemy's lead. Other than that, he's running a uh, gastrodon. Oh no, not gastrodon. Uh, what's it called? Dracovish. No, it's called Dracovish. It's also also a really good combo. You just tailwind, then your fishes rent. Usually outspeed everything. But this is going out of favor because I feel like Dr Dracovish uh, in the tournament has five percent pick, and I think it's uh, bad because it's a win more. It's a win more Pokemon. Like if you lead it in, into a bad start, you lose. That like, you lose the whole game. <laughs> Cause I, you, there's no catching up. There's no catching up because you need a Pokemon to support the Dracovish, and then the Dracovish dies, and you bring a support that doesn't support much else. <laughs> oh, th well, then again, Whimsical can support um, a lot of things, but you're you're missing one damage dealer already. That's why I feel like Dracovish is a win more kind of um, monster Pokemon. Yeah, and it probably has this Whimsical probably has beat up for the Mudsdale to get a lot of defense, I guess. And then it's also got the Snow uh, Hail Core and running Rose and Wash for Will O Wisp Electric and Water coverage. Well, he had to, he's already got a Dracovish, so don't really understand why you need the uh, Rotom Wash. Maybe Heat will be good? Not sure. Not too sure. And then number 22 has a uh, Arctozor, I think. Togekiss, Whimsical, Deriludon. The G the Manasan and a pass cinema. This team I'm not entirely sure of, right? I have no clue what it does. I didn't check out the the winner of Invitationals, so I don't know how strong Octazolt is, so I don't really have a comment on it, but it's kind of a um, tailwind and then Sweep with Deriludon or G Determinatan. I'm guessing Arctazolt also comes in. Uh, and I'm not sure what the regular moveset for the monkey is. The Passamian. I might give this a try. I do need to try out this Arctazolt and this this plus monkey. I can't pronounce it. Though. Iceberg VGC at level 23 has the Togekiss Dragapult Core, Arcanite, probably Intimidate, Sand Core, and a Gastrodon. Pretty standard team. I think I've explained this up here as well. <laughs> Somewhere up here. Red Silver, pretty similar team, right? Instead of running Arcanite, it's running Condokel. And with that, and instead of running Tyranitar, it's running most likely G Max Pikachu here. Yeah. Uh, G Max Pikachu is pretty good. It's kind of like G Max Butterfree, sleeping everything, but instead it's a paralyzed. So um, instead of a chance of them waking up, they have no chance of getting out of paralyzed without uh, using ability, right? And if it doesn't proc, their speed is already low, and that means you pretty much outspeed everything. Minus the Condo Core. But Condo Core is pretty tanky and it does a lot of damage. I like that team. I do want to try out uh, Pikachu, see if it's really worth it or not. And the last team at number 25 has uh, Triggering Core with G Max Snorlax, but. I think people didn't bring too much G-Max Snorlax because it's really easy to counterable. You just hit into the G Snorlax when it's belly drummed and it should die. It just should die before it does much. Especially if you don't have any healing on it. It's got a, also a Togekiss Dragapult support with Intimidate, really important, and 
mold breaker X drill to cover for for them and also cover for Mimikyu. All right, that's that's my whole breakdown of uh, Galar Weekly number uh, the sixth weekend. If you enjoyed this video, and uh, please comment on the section below and tell me what you thought of my analysis. I know it might be a little bit newbie. Uh, I'm still learning on the way, but if you guys uh, have something to inform me about, please tell me in the comment section below. I'm happy to learn, and this is also like a good way for me to learn because. Uh, more about Pokemon because I'm bringing my thoughts out and thinking of it more deeply than I would normally and putting it in just the video form because I think a lot of these Pokemon are pretty cool and if you like this weekly breakdown um, I will do more of these. Alright, uh, thank you guys for watching and peace out.